Hey Jackals, in today's video we'll take a look how we can automatically animate between shapes using polygons in DaVinci Resolve 18, something as you see now. Now let's get digital. I'll be making this in a new fusion composition, so right click in the media pool, new fusion composition, make it and create it and put it onto a timeline. If you want, you can also extend the duration. Then simply select it and go into the fusion page. We'll be doing this with polygons, so make a couple of them. Or maybe make five in total. And now what you want to do is to make a couple of shapes. So let's see, the polygon one will be a box. Polygon two will be something else. When you make the polygons, you don't have to close them. You can have them opened. If a polygon is closed, you'll see a circle appear at the mouse pointer. But if you don't want to close it, you don't need to. And this is also important later on, and I'll show you why. So now we have a bunch of polygons. You don't need to change any of the options here because we'll be using separate polygons to actually display them. So now that you have a bunch of polygon shapes, make another polygon, and this will be the one that will actually be used to display these polygons. Now what you want to do, and you want to do everything the same for these polygons. Now before you make this last polygon, you actually have to go to all of these polygons, remove the polygon polyline so it's not animated, and right click again and click publish. Now that the polygon is published, we'll actually be able to use the path that the polygon makes. So I'll do the same for all of these polygons. So now with this last polygon, we don't need to make any shape. You do want to right click and remove the polyline, but now instead of publishing it, you want to make a custom polygon. Now you get a line and you also get a modifiers tab. So click on the modifiers tab and the first thing that you'll see is this. The only thing that I'll be using is the number in one, but you can use any number of points and you can also adjust them up to nine in the numbers control by enabling them or disabling them. And you can also disable the points if you don't need them or add multiple of them if you do need them. But what we'll be changing is under the polyline tab, we'll be using these options. The first one that we'll see is the number of points. By default, it's set to 20. And these are the points that you see here. And we can increase this to 100 or put in a custom number like maybe 200. But for now I'll just leave it at 20 so that you can see the difference. As you can see the polygon is currently just a line and we can't actually see it. So if you go here and increase the border you can now see it. And that's why I said you don't need to make any changes to the visibility of these polygons. Because we'll be using these settings to specify how this polygon will actually be visible. So let's get back to the modifiers tab. We'll be changing how this polygon behaves by using these two expressions. If I just set here px, we'll get a diagonal and you can use all sorts of math. But what you can do, if you don't know what you need, is to go to help, DaVinci Resolve manual, on page 2668, you'll get poly expressions. And this is the default example. And I'll also show you something else so you can combine multiple of them. But before I get to that point, we first have to connect these polygons to this one. So first choose the source one, and this one is important. As you can see, this one is closed. This one is also closed. This one is closed, and these two are opened. And I don't know what the difference between the closed and the open polygon is, but this also depends which one you use as the source. And I'll show you in the previous example. So in this one that you saw in the intro, now this polygon that is currently connected has three polygons and all of them are opened. As you can see, this one is also opened even though it's fairly close. So this polygon looks like this. And in this one, the polygons are closed. At least the first one is closed and these two shapes are opened. And because of that, as you'll see in a bit, these two polygons also end up closed. 
So if you want to have open polygons, you also have to set the surface polygon to be open. In this case, I'll just go in the order that I've made the polygons. So one, two, and three, I select polygon six, go to the modifiers, right click, connect to, polygon, polyline, value. If you didn't publish the polygon, you won't have this option available. Connect it to the second one, and lastly, we'll connect it to the third one. And if we display it now, now the first polygon is displayed using PX and PY, and we can now adjust the number of points, and by increasing them, the polygon also looks better. So maybe now we can set this to 200 to make it look nice. And now we can also go back to the tools and set how this polygon should be visible. So I'll display the polygon in this way. And now what I want to do is to change from this shape to one of these two automatically. To do that, we'll be using get 2x for the second polygon and get 2y and in the brackets disp, which is displacement. And to get the third one, we'll simply use get 3x. So let's just copy the values from this example and see what we get. We shouldn't be able to see any changes, and we don't. And that is because it's using n1. And as I've said, we'll be using number in 1. And that is basically what n1 is. So if I change this from 0 to 1, you can see that it changes the shape to the second polygon. Now, if the value goes over one, the change will go out of bounds. So that's how you can do the animation by simply animating this value from zero to one. And now it animates automatically. But now I don't want to just animate from one polygon to the second one. I also want to be able to animate from the second one to the third one by using the same number in one and one expression. To do that, I'll simply use this expression and I'll also put it on the screen. So this is for the X values and this is for the Y values. We now basically have an if statement. If N1 is less than one, then this first expression will happen, which is what we did. And if it's more than one, the second one will happen. So now let's go back to the controls and see what the N1 does. So now when the value is zero, we have this shape, then we have this one, and lastly we have this one. And this will be automatically animated if we simply do this from, let's say two, to zero or from zero to two, depending on which direction you want this to go. So something like that. Now, how could you stack multiple polygons? You have two options. The first one is, well, it gets confusing really fast. You can go to the modifiers tab. In the polyline, you can remove the published one. And you can also use a custom poly. And in this poly, you will have the same options, but I said you only have one node and you can do this as many times as you want, but it gets confusing really, really fast. So even at this point with three custom polygons, I have no idea which one I would have to use. So the best way to do that, or the easiest way for me, now what I'll do, I'll simply change the animation values from zero to two, just like that. So now I've basically reversed the animation and the simplest way to do this is to use a second polygon and make it just like this one. So remove the polyline, make it a custom poly. So now I know which one is which because you have different nodes and now you can connect the remaining polygons. But if you want to have seamless animation, now in this case, you wouldn't use this polygon because it's closed and these two polygons are opened. So in this case, this polygon should also be connected if we used this one, the rectangle as a source. So if you have something like that, 
In this case, you can make a new polygon. You can also rename it so you know what it is by pressing F2, change the name. And in this case, I'll just go over this polygon with the only difference being that I won't connect the last point to make it closed. So I won't click here, I'll just click like here. So now this polygon is opened and this one will be the source. So connect it. Oh, well, actually I have to remove the polyline and publish it. And now I'll be able to connect it. So this one will be now the first one. And then we can connect number six and seven, actually four and five. Four and five, just like that. Now I'll use the same expressions. I can also increase the number of points. So this is PX and PY. Now if I display this polygon and go to the tools and just show it so it's visible, we don't have any animation because I didn't set the number in, but I can animate it just by changing the number in. And now the only way to combine these two polygons is to first see which one we have to use. So in this case, we'll go from value two to value one. Now let's say that this is the end of the animation for this one. So this one will start at this point. So value two, animate it, and we'll go to zero just like that so i have now simply combined these two polygons i can now also add the background to change the color of them you can also add all kinds of effects if you want now one thing that you have to do is to make sure which one you display so at this point we want the first one to be visible and this one to not be visible so we could animate the level and go one frame back and disable it so now we only have the first polygon that is animated. And let's see. This should be two at this point. So now we have the first polygon that is animated. The animation stops. And the second polygon gets animated, as you can see. So we need to disable the first polygon at this point. But now, as you can see, we have some issues with the polygons overlapping. And to do this easily is to simply go to the second polygon that has the paint mode. This one doesn't, as you can see. So in this polygon, you can simply change the paint mode to add. That fixes it. Otherwise, instead of using the paint mode, you could also animate the length of the polygon that is hidden. But I think just using add will save you a lot of time. So now in this example, we've basically connected five polygons, six if you count this one, and the animation happens automatically and changes the shape between them. Now you can add all kinds of effects. In this case, I've added a blur node, a soft glow, and a duplicate to get something like this. And lastly, if you just want to copy the expressions that I've used, you can go to my website, link will be down below, and simply copy them. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve and video editing content, and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video comes out. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jackals, keep it digital.